Glacier? Oh, yeah. No. No. Positively no. I should say not. Not a ghost of a chance. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, J.G. Now get this, Seaver. The next one to come in late is to be fired. Why, of course, J.G. Now, these time records show that there is only one employee without any marks against him, number 48. How long has he been with us? Eight years and never late. Say, that's the sort of people we want around here. Most decidedly, J.G. Let's raise his salary. Why, certainly, J.G. Most decidedly, of course. Where's Jones? He isn't in yet. Why, it's after nine. Guess he's late. But that's impossible. Jones is never late. Have you seen Jones? Not this morning. Have you? No, I haven't. He must be late. Yes, he must be late. <laughs> Goodness me, Jones! Of all people, Jones! Good morning, Cymbeline. Morning, it was. Oh, I had a wonderful dream last night. I'd like to tell you about it. Yes, but you're much too young. Oh, I wish that dream would come true someday. But it won't end was, will it? Yeah, now, take your time, Abby Lard. You'll get your breakfast. Oh, the world knows me, little Abby Lard. The world knows me, little Abby Oh, the world knows me, little Abby Lard. Oh, the world knows me, little Excuse me, sir. 
jokes. Go ahead, Jones. I'm waiting. Well, Mr. Seaver, I, uh, I bought a new alarm clock last week. It carried a five-year guarantee. And this morning, it went back on me. You went back on me, Jones. You placed me in a very difficult position. This morning, J.G. instructed me to raise your salary. Oh, he did? Oh, thank you, Mr. Seaver. <laughs> yes, but he also gave me instructions to fire the next employee who came in late. Oh. And you're both people, Jones. Now, what am I going to do? I can't raise your salary and then fire you. That wouldn't make sense, would it? Uh, no, sir, it wouldn't. <laughs> oh, dear. Why do such things have to happen to me? All right, Jones. I'll figure something out. Yes, sir. You better get busy on that McIntyre account. We're behind already. Yes, sir. You see fit to step in at 9.30 this morning. Well, if you must know, it's because I saw fit to step out at 9.30 last night. Well, it might interest you to know that J.G. gave me orders to fire the first person who came in late. Well, and that's uh, me, I guess. It most certainly is. Well, in that case, I quit. When do I go now? We don't fire people in the middle of the week. You can stay till Saturday. That's mighty big of you. Good morning, Miss Clark. Hiya, Josie. I'm not into anybody, Sam. That's my idea of a boyfriend, He-Man Plus. I only knew where he was. Sam, Sam, get a load of this. Look, look, who is this? Killer Mannion. I know, but who else? What do you mean, who else? Look. Well, what do you know about that? Here, Charlie, come here. All right, Charlie. <laughs> look, look at this. <laughs> Did you get it? Say, <laughs> hey, that's right. <laughs> come on, boys and girls, come on. <laughs> Stick him up! <laughs> Hello, Chiller. Who you figured out rubbing out today, big boy? Hey, Great, you're a whole man with Jordan. Yeah, run around and hold on. Hey, I wish you'd leave me alone. I'm way behind on the macker and Jack McIntyre account. Please. Sorry, Chiller, we didn't mean any harm. Your ace is without cheap. Say, there's a couple of guys we'd like snuffed out. Here, here. What's going on there? Get back your this, you people.
vegetable plate as usual. Delighted. Well, I've been canned. Feel like celebrating. Oh, I'm fed up with that office anyway. Full of nuts. One of them's been annoying me for weeks. Yes. Sends me verses. Cymbeline. They're so sloppy, the guy's afraid to sign them. Upper operator, police headquarters. Police headquarters. Please, quick. It's an emergency. Yes. There are crooks in that office. Crooks? Yes. I brought a picture of myself down to the office to have framed. It cost me two bucks, and somebody swiped it. Well, yeah, imagine that. Hey, bud. Russia, it's Mannion. Make it snappy, it's Mannion. Okay. Stand by. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Girlfriend of mine's an air holtus. I might take a whirl at that. Or else hop a freighter. I've always wanted to go abroad. Yeah, so have I. You know, that's why I started to write. Jonesy, don't tell me you're a writer. Oh, yeah, I've written a lot of stories. Say, I finished one yesterday about Egypt. Egypt? Yeah, I've always been interested in Egypt. Shanghai, for instance. I've always wanted to go to Shanghai. Say, I've got a stamp from Shanghai. <laughs> G. Carpenter Company burning down. Oh. Think about Manion. Think about Manion and be quick about it. Oh, you're making a big mistake. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This man's name Shut is up. My name is not Manion. It's Jones. I'm a member of the YMCA, gentlemen. I have my card right here. I'll show you. Ah, yeah, He's got a gun. Cop him. Get him out of here. You two fellas come back to that bar. Take that cop and stop him. Stop him. Stop him. That's the wrong man. My name isn't Mannion. I tell you all. No, we know your Wait name. Where's that young lady? Where's Never mind. Mr. She'll be taken care of. No. Oh. I tell you, you've got the wrong. Oh, you're a pretty tough young fella, huh? They're grilling Nanyan's girl now. I'll get her life story later. Yes, yes. Nanyan's sweetheart. The DA isn't here yet. We'll get the Mannion later. No, no, they won't let us see him till the DA gets here. No, no. Don't worry, we'll get a story as soon as he gets here. Who do I have to see? Yeah, who do I have to see about the reward? What reward? Well, for the capture of Mannion. I saw him first and I telephoned the police. Sure. You did? Mm -hmm. Hey, Bill, shoot this guy. No! He put the finger on Mannion. You got the guy put the finger on Mannion. He got the guy put the finger on Mannion. Come on, come on, come on. 
It was me that pulled the rod on him, Detective Sergeant Michael F. Boyle. And how? Detective Sergeant Patrick J. Howe. Boyle. And how? The DA is coming. What? No, you can't. Come on, my hand. Okay. My hand. Come on, it's the DA again. Keep those guys out, all of them. You picked the wrong town, Mannion. You got the wrong man, I tell you. I may look like Mannion, but I'm not Mannion. Look out! My, my, my name is Jones. I, I work for the J.G. Carpenter Corporation. Sure. In Battle Creek, you were a book agent. In Superior, Wisconsin, a preacher. Now you work for the J.G. Carpenter Corporation. I, I've been working for them for eight years. Gentlemen, I, I'm a member of the YMCA. Check it. Get your cameras ready. Here comes the district attorney. Well, Mannion. My name is. Good work, Mac. Thanks, Chief. Checked up on the YMCA. Find me Jones III? Yeah, 33. Well, Mannion, we've got. My name is not Mannion. It's Jones. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to keep out of jail is to come clean with us. Now, who pulled that Bloomingdale bank job? Was it your boyfriend? Who was in on it with him? They just picked up Slux Martin. Okay, but that dame won't talk. Take it easy, will you? The DA just got here. They're sweating him now. She has beautiful blue eyes, but they have a cold, sinister look that mark her at once as a gangster's maw. It's no use playing Gaga, Mannion. We've picked up Slux Martin. Slux Martin? Who's he? If you think you're going to gain anything by... Uh, J.G. Carpenter's outside. Show him in. Who is it? Oh, that's my boss. He'll identify me. All right. Get All right. Let's get him. Right. Right. What do you think? Right. Here he is, Mr. Spencer. What's the idea of dragging me down here without a word of explanation? I'm a very busy man. I don't want to take a minute of your time, Mr. Carpenter. I just want you to identify somebody. Take a good look at this man. Do you know him? I never saw him in my life. But, Mr. Carpenter, I've been working for you for eight years. Says he works for you. Well, maybe he does. We have a large office, employ over a hundred clerks, and I... Wait a minute. He does look a bit familiar at that. <laughs> Certainly, he would. If you read the papers this morning... Papers? What? what? Why? Why, it's Mannion. That's right. Killer Mannion. Oh, but Mr. Carl, oh, just a minute. What do you want to stick to a guy like that for? He's got a dame in every town. Look how he ran out on that gal in Des Moines. He'll run out on you, too. Guys like that always do. Where do we change cars? If you want to keep your nose clean, all you got to do is open up. Turn state's evidence, and I personally guarantee you can beat the rap. I'll take cheese. Hey, boy. Come here. <laughs> well, baby, you'll be interested to know. Mannion's just confessed. No. Right in there this minute. Well, what do you think of that? Well, I guess the jig's up. Sure it is. But not for you, kid. Not if you want to play ball. Imagine that heel squealing. Yeah, and he says you drove the death car. He did? Lieutenant, I'll talk now. I'll tell everything. What do you want to know? Well, about that Bloomingdale bank stick-up. It was Mannion, wasn't it? Yep, Mannion. What are you wasting Mr. Spencer's time for? Snap out of it. Quit kidding. Yes, but you're making a mistake. If you'd only call Mr. Seaver. Where does he live? At the YMCA, too? Oh, no, no. Don't make me do it. You don't know Mannion. He broke jail just to get me. If I identify him, yes. he's too late now, Slugs. He knows you ratted on him. You got nothing to lose. Look. I can identify him through the door, can I? I don't want him to see me. What's the matter, Slugs? What you scared of? Ah, he can't hurt you. We frisked him. <laughs> you don't know, man. He pulls guts out of his ears, don't well, make him do it. We his ears. Now, come on. No, fellas, no, don't. Gang word. I tell you, D.A., I don't know that. man. hardly ever come on, guy. Come on. Well, go on. Hello, Mannion. My name is Jones.
I guess mine is Mickey Mouse. So you broke out to get me, huh? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mannion, but you ain't got a chance. Now, you're sunk, you'll burn for this, and I know a lot of guys that ain't gonna cry. Me in particular. Why, you dirty double-crossing <laughs> yellow battle. How about that First National Bank in Harrisburg? That was Mannion. And that Evanston job. Mannion? And that Express Company job in Peoria. Mannion. Oh, Who do you okay. think we are? What do you want to do? Keep us in all night. Hello, Warden. Hello, Mr. Spencer. Hello, Max. Hi, Warden. Oh, there you are. Thought you'd get away, huh? I treat you like a human being, and he runs out on me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what anybody's talking well, about. Well, you will before the night's over. You're going to come clean with me, or there won't be enough left for you to put in solidary. Come on, now, Mannion. Who did it? Who helped you make that break? My name isn't Mannion. It's Jones. That farmer's trust job in Denver. Mannion. That mail car robbery in Colorado Springs. Mannion. Come on, tell him who did it. Who helped you make that lamb? Lamb? What is a lamb? Oh, now listen. Wait Mannion. a minute, Warden. What we want is positive identification. Are you sure he's Mannion? If that's not Mannion, you're not the district attorney. That's it. That's enough. Take him away, boys. Right. Oh, my goodness. I beg your pardon, sir. Would you please tell me who I should see what? about the reward? Please. Up town? No. Hold on that receiver, gang. Hey, 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 he ain't going to see him now. He's going to flash in the office. What about? Man, you just robbed a bank of town. You've been drinking. I know it, but it happened just a few minutes ago. You're crazy. I know that, too, but he just stuck up a bank. Must have been somebody else. I told the officer it couldn't happen, but it did. The cashier and several people identified him as Mannion, positively, and the guy told him he was Mannion. But we got Mannion here. Yeah. I can't help it. He just robbed a bank. Get him. Get Mannion. Send him here. But if Mannion just robbed a fellow we had in this room, whoever it is, bring him back. Right. That guaranteed trust company in Fresno. Mannion. That Sacramento Steel Company payroll stick up. Mannion. Pardon me, I wonder if you could tell me where to get the reward. I don't know. Where could I find Mr. Spencer? Mr. Spencer? Oh, I don't know. Oh. I don't care what anybody says. He looks more like Mannion than Mannion does. Oh, my name isn't Jones, it's Mannion. I mean, it isn't Janion, it's Moons. Oh, I don't know. It's Jones, Jones. That's what it is. Gentlemen, please. Uh, over here, please. Oh, Mr. Seaver, please. What's my name? Who am I? Jones. Jones. What are you doing here? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Seaver. I don't know. Just a minute, boys. Let me through here, please. We've just checked down this man's fingerprints, D.A. Well? There's something wrong. They're not Mannions. I told you my name was Jones. I'll bet it is at that. Gangway, look out! Gangway! Gangway. I beg your pardon, sir. Can you tell me where I'm... It ain't Mannion at all. It was a guy named Jones. What? You men are on 24-hour duty from now on. Can we get Mannion? All right, there he is. alive. Turn around, Mr. Thank you, sir. Forget it. Say, you haven't got a twin brother, have you? Oh, no, sir. I have no relations of any sort. Except my Aunt Agatha in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, Jones, uh, that McIntyre account you were working on... Oh, now. yes, the McIntyre. Oh, Mr. Spencer, I, I should be getting back to the office, really. Do, do you mind? That's all right. You're free to go. Get out. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, come, Jones. Yes, Mr. Seaver. Oh, uh, gentlemen. I, I, I'm sorry I caused you all this trouble. That's all right. Oh, wait. He can't leave here. Why not? He looks too much like Mannion. He'd be back here in 15 minutes. Every cop in the city is looking for him. That's right. Well, what are we going to do? Hmm. Get me the Mannion files. Fingerprints, photographs, everything they got. Bring them in. Tell me it ain't true, Luke. What ain't? I had to get the wrong man in there. It ain't Mannion. That's right. Somebody made a mistake. Somebody? It was me made a mistake. My life wasn't worth a dollar before. It ain't worth a ruble now. Mannion, sure to get me. Well, what do you want me to do? Water some crepe? You drag me in here to identify me. You gotta protect me. You gotta take care of me. Lock me up. Put me in jail. Good 
DA. He ought to leave the state. Oh, that's no good. The police are after Mannion all over the country. Then he's got to leave the country. Oh, but, gentlemen, my work at the office would... He has the McIntyre couch to get out. P.A., Slugs Martin just came in. He's afraid Mannion will get him now. Wants us to put him in jail. How about it? That's it. That's what we'll do with him, with this guy. We'll stick him in the can. On my charge? Drunkenness, orderly, vagrancy, anything as long as he's locked up. That's not a bad idea. Send him up to my place. I have a few spare cells. Oh, gentlemen, I, I hardly think that I could... Uh, what are we going to do about the McIntyre account? I could fix one of them up nice and homelike with flowers and everything, and he could stay there till we get Manuel. Oh, uh, gentlemen, I don't think that that would... I have got it. Yeah. I'll give him a letter saying he is not Manuel. Huh? Then if he gets in trouble, he can flash it. Sort of a passport, huh? Yeah, that's the idea, a passport. Huh? I'll dictate it right now. Harry, get busy. Official stationery. To whom it may concern. This is to testify that the holder of this letter, Mr... Uh, jo Jones. Jones. Yeah. Jones. Is, uh, Arthur Ferguson Jones. Yeah, Mr. Arthur Ferguson Jones. Jones. Yes, that's right. <laughs> is not to be molested by the police because of his resemblance to one Killer Manion. Uh, come on, sister. DA, you got nothing to worry about. We got everything so... Mr. Jones, we owe you an apology. But anybody could have made the same mistake. This letter will keep you from being annoyed by the police. But you must keep it with you at all times. Yes, sir, I will. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, Miss Clark, are you all right? Never felt better in my life. Why, I've just come back from a cross-country sleigh ride. What is it, boy? What's wrong with you? I'm okay, D.A. I just swallowed something. Newspaper men are getting impatient, D.A. All right, come along, Jones. We're holding up headlines. <laughs> <laughs> Like Mannion will now say a few words. Huh? Oh. Uh, uh, my my name is Jones. Yes, Arthur Ferguson Jones. I, uh, I I was sitting in the restaurant having lunch when. Oh, he's famous! Terribly embarrassing, wasn't it, Miss Clark? Not to me. Oh, well, there was there was a person there by the name of uh, Slugs Martin. Do I Slugs Martin? Oh, oh, my goodness. He wanted to poke my eyes out as I sat there, handcuffed. And if it weren't for the police, he'd have done it, too. Come, come, folks. The newspapers contain a full account, I believe. This won't help you to get out the McIntyre account, Jones. How about a little work? Yes, Just sir. for contrast. Yes, sir. Thank you. J.G. wants to see you, Jonesy. Who? J.G., the boss, in his office. His private office? Yeah, his private office. Oh, J.G. Uh, just sent for me. Well, what are you worrying about? But in his private office. I've never been in his private office. Oh, stop being scared. Oh, I'm responsible for all this fuss. You know, he might fire me. Just growl at him, killer. You'll scare him to death. So, uh, J.G., uh, Mr. Carpenter wants to see me in his, uh, private office. I'm sorry, Jones.
Come in, Jones. Jones, I want you to meet Mr. Healy, a friend of mine from the record. What are they, a killer? J.G.'s just been telling me about that marvelous publicity. Oh, Mr. Carpenter, believe me, I had no intention of getting the firm's name into this. I merely told the reporter... That's that... quite all right, Jones. Here, sit down. But if you don't mind, I'll... Wrong. Rather... Sit down, sit, sit down. down. Make yourself comfortable. Here. Have a cigar. Oh, I'm sorry, but I never... Have one. Good for you. Smoke it. Oh, thank you, sir. That's the best cigar you can get. Say, Jones. I want to apologize for not identifying you this afternoon. Oh, Mr. Carpenter, my goodness, that was quite all right. <laughs> well, that was a pretty tough ordeal you went through. I understand you fainted. Well, all those questions made me quite dizzy, sir. <laughs> well, that's understandable. I'd have been a wreck myself. <laughs> hey, look here, I understand you right. Uh, yes, sir, I do. On my own time, sir. Well, now, Jones, uh, Healy here has got an idea he wants to talk to you about. It's like this, Jonesy. The paper figures this is a good time to pull the life story of Mannion. I've got a hunch. Who's the best man in the world to write that story outside of Mannion himself? A man who looks like Mannion. Good idea, I thought. Bring in the name of the firm. An inspiration. Swell. But you, you, you mean you, you want me to write for the papers? Make a great story. Yes, but uh, I don't know anything about Mannion. <laughs> uh, you don't have to write the stuff yourself. All we want is permission to use your name, Arthur Ferguson Jones, the man who looks like Mannion. Swell. Look, we'll run your picture in the paper every day, together with Mannion's. That ought to run another 30 days, maybe longer. Your moniker, your mug. The name of the firm. On the front page of every paper every day. Think of that, Jonesy. Think of it. Yeah, think of it. Yes, sir, I will. I'll, I'll think of it. Don't think too long, my boy. We've got to get started right away. The first installment starts tomorrow, the day after the latest. Now, look. <clears throat> A fine host you are, J.G. Where do you keep it? Oh, oh I remember in there. <laughs> well, how do you like it? Oh, it smells nice. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't drink. Ah, come on, snap out of it. We've all got our hair down. Come on, a toast. To the man that looks like Mannion. To the man who looks like Mannion. <laughs> Poor Jonesy. I hope he don't lose his job. I hope he does. Best thing in the world for him. Listen to this. Mr. Jones writes at night, hoping to storm the citadel of literary fame. He's written for years without any encouragement. <laughs> can you imagine Jonesy an author? <laughs> yes, I can. I've always thought that rabbit had something. All he needs is courage. Say, tell me something, Palsy. What do you think of this guy, Mannion? I'll tell you something, Palsy. Mannion is a false alarm. Highly overrated. Now, that goes for all those criminals. A criminal is as brave as his gun. You take his gun away, and he's a coward, just like anybody else. That's it! That's our first lead. What? Mannion, false alarm, says Jones. Put it there, Pally. It's going to be a sensation. Hey, let's have another drink. Mm. Let's have a couple more drinks. This is an extra special occasion. Mm. 
something? A woman is only a woman, but a good cigar is a smoke. Oh, he's a great man, Cymbeline. Heart of gold. Proud to work for old J.G. I die for J.G. I die for J.G.'s company. I die for you. Whoopee! <laughs> oh, uh, Seba. I'm taking the afternoon off. J.G.'s suggestion. But, Jones, I don't... Oh, yes, Steve, I forgot. You uh, put Miss Clark back on the payroll. J.G.'s order. What? You, you check with him. So long, slaves. I always told you that rabbit had something. Hello, it was. a girl. <laughs> sing out the world sings with you. Yes, but only sing with respect. Because I'm going to write the life of Manion. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to show him up for what he is. The big four flusher. Just a moron with a gun in his hand. I'd like to meet that fellow. <laughs> I'd go right up to him and I'd say, why, you great big yellow blimp. Tough guy. Hand over. Come on, that letter the DA gave you. Come on. Hmm. That's perfect. Now listen, buddy. I gotta go 50-50 on this pass. You're gonna use it in the daytime and me at night. It's gonna come in mighty handy. That's why I dropped in to see you. Can you talk? Yes, sir. Well, don't. You know what's good for you? You won't open your trap about my being here. And nobody, understand? And don't get careless after I leave here. Because if anything happens to me, one of my mob will take care of you. You get that? Yes. Okay. Now just sit there. And don't let nobody come into this room. I got a little work to do, and I'll be back in the morning.
Don't, don't worry, Eloise. Maybe he won't come back after all. Maybe it was all a dream. Why aren't you in bed? I, I... I couldn't sleep last night. Here's your passport. Two cops stopped me last night. Worked like a charm. Oh, uh, thank you. Now, here's the dough. All I want to do is lay up here for a couple of days. Just long enough to take care of a rat by the name of Slugs Martin. Slugs Martin? You know, he wanted to gouge my eyes out yesterday. He did, huh? Well, he ain't gonna do any more gouging when I get through with him. What's that? What's the morning paper? Pick it up. Yes. Anything about me in it? Oh, now, read it to me. It, uh, it, it says here you killed two guards last night. They lie. It was three. Go on, read it to me. At midnight yesterday, public enemy number one, Killer Mannion, cold-bloodedly slew two guards in a raid on the state armory. Accompanied by two of his men, Mannion surprised the guards at the armory. What's the matter? Oh, there, that's all there is. What? Well, what are you talking about? Why, the whole front page is full of me. Hmm. hmm. So you're gonna write about me, huh? Oh, well, I, I can get in touch with the newspaper office and call the whole thing off, Mr. Mannion. What for? It's okay with me. Only be careful what you pull, that's all. Yes, sir. Come on, I'll beat it now, will you? I'm getting sleepy. Yes, sir. What time do you knock off? At uh, five o'clock, sir. I'll be here at six, prompt. Yes, sir. Bring the afternoon papers. Yes, sir. The afternoon papers? You heard me. And don't you forget it. Yeah, and remember, one white out of you and you're out like a light. Yes. All right, now, shove off. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Jones. Hi, Jonesy. How are you? Uh, uh, this is Mr. Jones speaking. Uh, Mr. Arthur Ferguson Jones. Yes. <laughs> well, I want to talk to Mr. Healy. Yes, I must immediately. My goodness, he's not. Well, will you have him call me the moment he comes in? Yes, it's very important. Hiya, front page. You busy? Yes, uh, sort of. What do you got there, fan mail? 
Yes, the most extraordinary amount of letters. Well, how do you like that? First sign of success. Can you use a good secretary? Oh, excuse me, this is a call I expect. Uh, yes? Photographs? I'm sorry, but I have no photographs. Of all the ridiculous things, can you imagine Well, such... that's your public, Jonesy. You're becoming famous. Three of my girlfriends asked me to get pictures of you. I told them the kind of a caveman you were. I can feel that kiss yet. Why, well, I, I want to apologize for that, Miss Clark. What for? If it takes a few swigs to bring out that personality of yours, I'll buy you a case of scotch. Oh, it wasn't the drinks. Something came over me, and I just couldn't help it. I'm glad you couldn't. It isn't every girl gets kissed by the man that looks like Mannion. At least I hope it isn't. Well, I should say not. Thanks, Jonesy. Well, well, well. Good morning, Jones. I see your boyfriend was quite busy last night up at the armory, say. I hope you didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> no, sir, hardly. <laughs> you know, you were the topic of conversation all through dinner last night. Mrs. Carpenter wants to meet you. I promised her I'd have you up for dinner sometime soon. Why, I, I, I'd love that, sir. That's fine. I'll let you know when. Well, say, I almost forgot. And all that uh, youngest son of mine want me to ask you for your autograph. Do you mind? Just sign your name there. Oh. Want me to? Sure. Hey, that's fine, Jones. Thanks. Have a smoke. Thank you. So long, Jones. Jonesy, you sure are going places. Just think of it, an invitation to the boss's shack. Say, when those articles come out, there'll be no stopping you. How much are they paying you for them? Well, I don't know. Healy never said anything about it. Jonesy, you need a caretaker. And I think I'm elected. If you're afraid to talk to Healy, I'm not. Say, you can get enough out of this to take that trip to Shanghai. Some more mail, Jonesy. And a telegram. A telegram? Oh, my goodness. What is it? My Aunt Agatha from Bridgeport is coming in for a visit. Well, what of it? Yes, but I'm, I'm not in a position to have any visitors just now. Why aren't you? I haven't seen her for five years. Now, why should she want to come here now? I've got trouble enough without her. What's the matter with you? You haven't got a trouble in the world. But I have. The McIntyre account. I'd like to get it cleared up before the end of the year. Yes, sir. I wish you'd struggle through with it without the assistance of uh, Miss Clark. I get it. I can take a hint. Yes. Uh, has uh, Mr. Healy come to the office yet? But I've simply got to talk to him. He's terribly important. Well, could you give me his home phone? I know, I know, but, but please, please let me have it. Yes, but I've been trying to get Mr. Healy since 9.30 this morning. Well, I must get in touch with him. It's a matter of life and death. Well, never mind, never mind. I'll come down to the office myself. at the office for you to come back. Where were you? Well, I, I didn't feel well. I, I've been walking around all afternoon. See, I went down to the docks. There was a freighter there leaving for Shanghai. 
Oh, how I wanted to get on that boat. After that story? Say, you'd be a fool to leave here now. I read it, and it's marvelous. By the way, Healy was in to see you. I made a deal for you. He screamed murder at first, but finally we got together. Listen to this. 250 bucks a week. I guess that trip to Shanghai's a cinch now, Jonesy. Here's a contract. I told him I'd get you to sign it tonight. Oh, thank you. Oh, don't mention it. Always glad to serve a public enemy. Uh, what do you say we go up to your room and read it over? All right. Oh, no, no. No, not upstairs. Why not? Well, the, uh, the, the landlady is very strict about it. Police? Mr. Jones? You can leave the door open. Oh, no, no. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Here, I'll, I'll sign this tomorrow. Say, I, I want to thank you for everything you've done for me. I want you to know how much I appreciate it. No matter what happens to me. Who is it? It's uh, Jones. May I come in? Come in. What the devil kept you? I told you to be back here by six, didn't I? Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but I, I couldn't get here any sooner. When I say six, I mean six. Next time you hold me up, there'll only be one of us that looks like Mannion. Uh, there wasn't anyone here to see me. Uh, an old lady? No. Is that the afternoon papers? Yes, sir. Well, let's have it. All right, I'll fix me some coffee. Hmm? Hey, Josie. Come here. alarm. You shot off a lot of steam, didn't you? I'm a false alarm, am I? Oh, oh I didn't write it, sir. A man on the paper did it. I, I try to stop him from printing it. Yeah, I guess a lot of guys think I'm a false alarm. Oh, no. Who's going to write the rest of these articles? I'm supposed to, but I'll call the whole thing off. No, no, you won't. You're going to write them all right, only you're going to write them my way. Sit down. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll show you. A false alarm, am I? Well, that's looking some dope that'll make the heads dizzy. Something nobody knows. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, just put down what I give you. Don't make up nothing from your own head. You said here I'm as brave as a gun in my hand. All right, you listen to this. When I broke out of stand the other day, I had a gun, yeah, but it was a phony. That's the kind of a false alarm I am. Have you got that down? Yes, sir. Yeah, I put the turnkey on with my hands. Then when I made the turn of the corridor, it was jammed by a brace of Milwaukee's. It was what? There are guards with soft shoeing around. Now, don't ask no question. Just put down what I give you. Yes, sir. Yeah, and then I pulled a phone again on them, told them to stick up their mitts, and I grabbed their rods. And I made them step out ahead of me into the yard like they were taking me to the warden's office. We passed a dozen other guards on our way out. I figured the whole thing out myself. There was only one guard I had in the bag, and that was the one at the gate, but nobody knows. What are you making them things for? Why don't you put down what I give you? Why, th 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 this is shorthand writing. Mm. Yeah, then when I gets out into the yard, one of the guys in front of me squawks and hot puts it for the gate. Well, I let him have it with one of the heaters. Heaters? Shut up! Then I grabs the other guy and I holds him in front of me, just as I'm starting for the gate. By this time, the typewriters up on the walls are cutting loose, cracking away, and the air is as thick as dust with machine gun bullets. Look at that article. This man Jones seems to know a whole lot about Mannion. If he's just a clerk, how'd he get the information about the prison break? Well, he says here when the guards was fixed. Yeah. 
How do you suppose he found that out? That's what I'd like to know. I thought you and I were the only ones who knew about that. You haven't been talking, have you? Oh, Chief, you don't think that I... Oh, of course, of course, but if you ask me, there's something queer about the whole business. Jones, is it luncheon with Mr. Carpenter? Why? I don't know. Excuse me. Well, Mr. Chisler, what do you expect to get for nothing today? Out of you, Miss Sherlock, nothing. Where's Arthur Ferguson Jones? He won't be back this afternoon. Half day Saturday. Is there anything important? His first paycheck, that's all. Oh, you expect I'll take to see it. him? Yeah. When? This afternoon. Okay, tell him I want to see him as soon as possible. There's something I want to ask him. What do you want to know? Who's been helping him write those stories? What do you mean, who's been helping him? Where does a squirt like Jones get off writing all that juicy underworld lingo? For me, of course. You certainly have horn in yourself properly, haven't you? What do you get out of them? Nothing. Well, uh, you can always do business with me. I'm only interested in Jones. One of my men ran into Jones this morning. Nearly plugged him before he could show him that paper. You know, Chief, same thing happened to us last night. Ran plumb into him. I'm telling you, he nearly got a bullet right through that passport. Thought sure we had man yet. That guy Jones is getting in our hair. I wish he'd stay put. Well, it would make things simpler for us. You know, Washington wants us to shoot on sight. Now, how can we with this fella Jones running around? That's right. That's what's holding us up. Well, then put him away. That's it. Get Jones. Boyle. Yes, sir. Get Jones. Yes, sir. Get Jones. Get Jones. Who is it? Thanks, Jonesy. If I thought you were going to keep me waiting out there all night, I'd have brought a cot. Well, mystery of mysteries, I finally made it. I actually am seeing how the other half live. And it's just what I expected, Jonesy. Cozy, warm, old worldish, even a canary bird. Expresses your personality completely. Well, I'm glad you like it. Oh, it's adorable. And now, Mr. Jones, prepare yourself for the thrill of a lifetime. Your first paycheck, as an author, I mean, the magic carpet which will carry you to Shanghai and eternal ecstasy. Why, you thief, you. So it was you who stole my picture. Oh, Jonesy. You're cute. Why, Jonesy. <laughs> well, I... Well, I... I think I'd better be going. I'm... Oh, no. I just came up to bring you the check. And... Oh, no. Wait a minute. Stick around. Oh, no, no. I had better. The landlady's awfully strict about this sort of thing. I'll be seeing you at the office. Nick, hurry. Give me the police department. Hurry. Hurry. Hello, police department. This is Miss Clark speaking. Listen, I know where many... The police are exceptionally trigger conscious these days, Mr. Jones. But you can't very well blame them for that. That's why we want to place you under protective arrest. Oh, yes, but I, I can't afford to lose my job at the office, Mr. Spencer. It's either your job or your life. Well, then there are those articles that I'm writing for the newspapers, you know. You can they... write them up there. Oh, but I can't. Why not? Well, there's, uh, there's my research. Research? Yes. Well, what better place for research for the sort of stuff you're writing? in prison. Right, Mr. Mayor? Right. That's true. This isn't a question of choice, Mr. Jones. This is a grave emergency. That's yes, true. Right, Your Honor. Yes, gentlemen. Well, do you... Uh, I, I'd like to go home first, if you don't mind. What for? I'd like to pack a bag, sir. Oh, certainly, certainly. Boyle and Howell will take you home. Oh, well, if you don't mind, I'd much rather... Oh, no, there's nothing to worry about, Mr. Jones. It's only for a short while. Mannion is practically in our hands. 
We've got a pretty good idea where he is. You have? Yes, we have. Uh, you bet we have. What you mean that you... All have... right, boys, take Mr. Jones home. Oh, yes, sir. Well, uh, thank you very kindly, gentlemen. Well, thank heavens that's over. I think I'll go up with you. No, 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 please. Why not? What's the matter? Well, I, I'd rather you didn't. Oh, I get it. A dame, huh? Yes. <laughs> okay, kid, but make it snappy. Hey, <laughs> oh. You know, I got a hunch. I got a hunch that 25 grand is going to be copped by none other than Detective Sergeant Boyle. And how? Here's your gun, Mr. Mannion. You shouldn't leave it around like this. What'd you pick up this gun for? Why didn't you plug me when you had the chance? We were asleep. You can't shoot somebody who's sleeping. Why not? I'd have done it if I'd have been in your place. I'll tell you why you didn't do it. You're afraid of me. You're afraid of me, asleep or awake. Yes, sir. Yeah. What's that? Who is it? The police. Oh, they don't know you're here. They're waiting for me. For you? What for? They want to send me to prison so I'll be out of the way. Oh, I see. Well, they told me I had no choice in the matter. I had to go whether I wanted to or not. Get over and wave to him. Hurry up! Tell him you'll be right down. I'll be right down. Hurry up and pack your grip. I don't want them dicks coming up here. Yes, sir. What's the interest on 25 grand at 6%? Now, you can't get 6% anymore. Lucky to get 5%. 5%, 12, 50 a year. That's not bad. Hey, what's he doing up there? Packing a trunk? Say, you don't suppose he's trying any funny business, do you? No, what's a percentage? You know, maybe I should have gone up with him at that, dame or no dame. I think I'll go up there and take a look. Well, what kept you up there? I was just coming up after you. I'm oh, sorry. OK, hop in. Well, Jonesy, when we get you safe up there in prison, it'll be a cinch to get Mannion. Yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, uh, I'd like to stop on the way and phone, if you don't mind. Okay, we'll stop someplace. Thanks. Yeah. I'm on my way to the prison now. A couple of dicks are taking me up there. What? 
Well, Slugs Martin is up there, ain't he? That's what I'm on waiting for, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now you guys get hold of Jones and hold him. We'll take care of him later. Now snap into it. Boss just gave us a ring and uh, told us to come up here. So oh. get into your clothes, buddy. Well, uh, Mr. Mannion took my clothes. Haven't you got another suit? Yes, I uh, I have a gray two-button. Uh, well, get into that. Yes, sir, I will. Uh, uh, right away. Oh, uh, could I offer you uh, a cup of tea? Go on, get dressed, will you? Snap it up. Washington sent me down here to clean this thing up, and I'm going to do it. I tell you, the key to the whole situation is Jones. Did you read that article? Why, yes. It's about Mannion's prison break. Jones says that Mannion had one of the guards fixed. That's right. Did you know that? No. Did you? No. No one knew it except me and a couple of the men in my department. And we kept it a secret. Now, how did Jones know it is what I want to know. Might have been a stab in the dark. Oh, is that so? Read the article. It's written as if Jones had been an eyewitness to the break. Worse than that, as if he took part in it. Now, look here, Mr. Russell. Surely you don't think... I don't think anything. There's something funny going on here, and I want to talk to Jones. Get him down here right away. Certainly. Get the warden up at the prison. There you are. We're having trouble with Slugs Martin. He don't want to wear the prison outfit. Why should he? Not a prisoner here. He's here in his own volition. Well, he looks kind of funny running around the yard in his own clothes. <laughs> he looked funny anywhere. That's tough. Hello? Yes, yes, Mr. Spencer. I'll send Jones to town right away. Train leaves at 2.30. OK. Where's Jones? in the visiting room talking to a friend of his, a goofy-looking guy by the name of Siever. Get Jones up here right away. OK, Chief. And I brought you something myself. What's that? The McIntyre account. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Sure, of course, they As long might. as you're on the payroll, you might as well do a little work. Goodness knows, you haven't been doing much work at the office lately, have you? Uh, no, I, I haven't. Well, you see, they've been... Warren wants to see you right away, Mr. Jones. Hi. Well, uh, I'll, I'll be back and collect all these things. That's uh, mighty swell of the gang. You give them... Uh, I'll, I'll be... Don't go away now. Jones has changed. Mr. Jones, there's something hot downtown. I just got a call from a district attorney. He wants to see you right away. You're to take the next train. That's 2.30. Hmm? I've arranged for one of the guards to take you down to the station in an automobile. Yes. Be at the prison gate at 2 o'clock sharp. Yes, is that all? That's all. Hey. Wait a minute. I don't know. You look more like Mannion than ever. Oh, get out. Beat it. Hello, Mr. Martin. 
Well, now, don't make that mistake again. I'm Jones. Arthur Ferguson Jones, you remember me. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, I've been trying to see you ever since I came here. What about? Mannion. Uh, you know, I've been writing articles about him for one of them papers. Oh, yeah? And I understand you're a very good friend of his. Who said I was? I never had any use for that coked up rat. Oh, as bad as all that, huh? Boy, say, listen, that guy had double crossed his own mother. Come on, let's take a little stroll where we can be by ourselves, huh? You know, man, you don't mean a thing without the mob around him. Get him by himself, and he's as yellow as they make him. Is that so? Yeah, he was off of me because I had his number. He knew he was Slater for the skids. Yeah. <laughs> now, he was a dirty double crossing rat. He should have been rubbed out long ago. He was nothing but a skunk. He crossed everybody that ever strung with him. I'd like to meet him face to face. I'd get him. I'd just like to watch the yellow come right up. Why, the louse. Mr. Jones. So long. So long. Ah, so long. I'll be seeing you. Okay. Oh, Jones, the warden just told me that you were going into town, and he said it would be all right if the guard gave me a lift to the station. Well, yeah, that's swell. It was him, Chief. How could we? He even had Jones's clothes on. That's right. Alibi. You had the chance of a lifetime and Mannion made a sucker out of you. And how? Yeah. And you said if you ever got Mannion back to prison again, he'd rot before he ever got out. Well, you had him. And you let him walk out. I still don't think it was Mannion. No? Well, then who killed Slugs Martin and the guard? Maybe it was Mannion. But you can't pass the buck to me, Spencer. You sent him up as Jones. I'll phone Mr. Spencer. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm the man who identified Mannion in the first place when he was Jones. I've been working on the case ever since, and I have a theory. Right. The same guy has been calling me up all week. I can't get him out of my hair. Mr. Carpenter. Mr. Spencer, where's Seaver? Who the devil is Seaver? My office manager. He went to the prison to see Jones, and he hasn't been heard from since. Well, don't ask me. Ask the warden. D.A., I called to see that Clark girl this morning, see? She wasn't home last night. Well, what of it? She's missing, too. Miss Clark! See her? Where's Jones? Miss Clark! Yeah. I tell you, boss, this town's getting too hot for us. Let's get going while the going's good. Well, there ain't a chance. They got every road covered. What are you gonna do? Hang around here until they come and get us? You leave it to me, will ya? I ain't steered you wrong yet, have I? I know. Yeah, what's well, that? Is it? Now, yeah. just a minute. There's only one chance of our getting out of here. That's if they stop looking for Mannion. Yeah? But who says they're gonna stop? So if you was a copper and you found Mannion dead, you'd stop looking for him, wouldn't you? Hey. Yeah. 
Who's going to croak you? Hey, you ain't thinking of bumping yourself off. No, oh, me? Hey! Bring that guy Jones in here. Oh. Come on, Jonesy. The boss wants to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, just easy. Uh, just easy, please. Oh. You mugs better beat it out of here. I'm going to knack the slab and I'll break your heart. I'm very much obliged to you, gentlemen. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. I got good news for you. I'm letting you go. I'm sorry about dragging you down here, but I had to get into that prison just because Slugs Martin was there. He ain't there anymore. He ain't anywhere. I'm gonna try and lamb out of town tonight. They'll probably get me, but not alive. Maybe the next story you'll write about me will be all about how I was croaked. Oh, I, I, I hope not, sir. You can help me, Jonesy. How? It's going to be the last favor I'm ever going to ask of you. I want you to take this money down to the First National Bank and put it in the safety deposit vault. And then when I'm croaked, I want you to take the money out and deliver it to my mother. You'll find her name and address in this envelope. I do this myself, only one of the guards up at the prison nicked me in the head when I beat it out of there. You know, this wound would be a dead giveaway. Will you do it for me, Jonesy? Well, <clears throat> could, could, couldn't you get one of your own men to do this for you? One of my men? Which one? Why, there ain't a one of them in there that I can trust. My mother never get this dough. And that's the one thing I'm trying to take care of before it's too late. Yes, but, but how could I do it? I'd be recognized as soon as I stepped out on the street, and I'd never reach the bank. That's smart of you. But I figure that out, too, myself. You can put on a disguise. Say, I've done it lots of times when I pull jobs. Here. Yeah, stick on this mustache. Go on out, try it. What do you mean? Put it on. How's it feel? Tick, tick, tickles a little. Oh, you'll get used to it. Hey, there's a mirror over there. Go on, have a look at yourself. Don't be scared. My goodness, it, it does make a difference, doesn't it? <laughs> Why, certainly, say. You'd never be known in a million years. Have you got a poke? A poke? Yeah, a pocketbook. Oh, yes, sir. Well, put this in it. Um, Mr. Mannion, I, I, I don't like to refuse you anything, but... You're not going to refuse me. I think of the old lady. She's alone and helpless. Have you got a mother? No, sir. Oh. Yes, but I, I, I've got an Aunt Agatha in Bridgeport. And I'm terribly worried about her. She's disappeared someplace. Oh, well, aunts ain't the same as mothers. Well, what do you say, buddy? Will you do it for me? Yes, sir. Now, don't forget, First National Bank. And be sure and get there before it closes. Say, you better hurry up. There isn't much time left. Come on, shove off. <laughs> yes, sir.
deep washing work drinks, you almost fooled me. Oh, never mind that, never mind. Look here. Get to a phone right away. Call up the police. Me? Yeah, tell him you want to slugs Martin's men. Sore about me knocking them off. So you're tipping them off that Mannion is on his way to the First National Bank to pull a stick up single-handed. Tell him he's got a mustache on. You know, the same disguise I had on for the Farmer's Trust Bank in Denver. I got it. Well, that's that. <laughs> The minute Jones is bumped, the bars are down, and that's all we need. <laughs> hey, where are you going now? Well, I'm going down to Gertz. Oh, now, but listen. Ah, oh, shut up, Willie. She's only down the street. I'll be back in an hour. I know, boss, but with Jonesy on the spot, we got to think of landing out of town. Now, don't be frank with me. This is all right. All right, folks. Don't be frank with me. Hey, the manager? Yes, sir. Killer Mannion's going to stick up this bank. That's a closing time. Killer Mannion? Yeah, we're taking charge. Now, we don't want anybody hurt. Get all your clerks and the people downstairs out of sight. Hurry up. Yes, sir. All right, pay attention, everybody, now. Knock up everything and get downstairs as quick as you can. Hurry up. Get down there, you men. Take those coats off and leave them here. Boys, get into those coats. Hurry up. Get now, get down there. Stay down there for the bottle. Wait back. Go on downstairs. Yes, sir. On your way. On your way. Get down there. Come on, now. Get that hat off there. What's the matter with you? Take all those. Get your hat off there. Yo, oh, McGillicuddy, what are you doing? You think you're trying to get over that all window? Come on, you fellas. Get down here. Keep those cannons trained on the door. Don't let anybody buy it. Nobody. Take that hat off, you fat head. Get that hat off there. First National Bank, quick! Everything's all set, Mac. But don't you think you better have a couple of men planted outside of that door? No. If Mannion spotted any of us outside, he's liable to start shooting. Now get back to your places. Dorman. Yes, sir. You say you have a night bell outside? Yes, sir. Fine. The minute you spot Mannion, ring it. Yes, sir. And don't be afraid. We're right behind you. What's your name? Why, my, my, my name is uh, O'Connor, Mike O'Connor. License 2698. Yeah, never mind, I'll walk. 2698. Remember when he comes through that door, shoot and shoot the kill. Have you got your men placed? All right, man. Down there, out of sight, out of sight, both of you. Get your hat down. Now, the minute he comes through that door, let him have it, boys. Showed up yet? Fine, get back there. Stay at that door. Do you want to get killed? No, sir. Where do you think you're from? Get back here. Well, I'm sorry, officer. I've got to get across the street. I've got to get to the First National Bank. Well, you wait for the signal. Well, that bank's done closed for the day. All right, go on. I left it on the table. Well, I'd have to go back for it.
He done gone. He's getting away. Come on, men! That's the way we're going to do it. We're going to put it up to the boss straight. If he don't want to go with us, we'll take it on the land without him. That's right. He can hang around here all he wants to. Not me. Me neither. There he is now. Remember, fellas, we stand pat. Okay. What's the news, boss? Have the cops knocked off Jones yet? It's time you showed up, boss. We were just thinking of leaving. Yeah, we ought to get going. This is the way we figure it. It's a great idea having the cops knock off Jones, but now that it's over, we want to leave. It's kind of getting too hot for us. Lock it. Yeah. The boys don't like the idea of hanging around here, just on account of Gert. He could get a half a dame. We can take the clock girl along. Yeah, that clock dame's okay. But the other two, they're a pain in the neck. Ah, uh, Siva's all right. But that Aunt Agatha, she's a holy terror. She almost talked me to death. Jones is coming back. Something must have gone wrong. What's that boob coming here for? What do we do now, boss? Should we let him in? Yeah, let him in. Shall we plug him? Yeah, plug him. It's more humane this way. Sure. All right? Yeah, all right. Will you give us a great big kiss? And look right into these cameras. Quiet, quiet. Okay. Right. How about it, Jonesy? Do you need a slug of whiskey? Oh, I should say not. Oh! 